This game is the most successful Forza title ever made, beating its predecessors by three times the player count, with positive reviews from both players and critics, all contributing to its well-deserved Racing Game of the Year award. Built from the ground up, Forza Motorsport delivers the best racing experience on the market and is only going to get better through its life service model, and that is what Turn 10 wants you to believe. It doesn't take much digging to discover the fake and paid positive reviews with Microsoft deleting the negative ones, the game's dying player account number, and the unfinished state of it that is not getting any better with updates. Their marketing slogan, built, built from, from the ground, ground up, up, could not have been more untrue, because not only the game is entirely ripped from the previous titles, but fails to exceed them in any aspect. Six years of development with zero improvements. This is how Forza Motorsport was brought to the ground down. FM made huge promises prior to its release, but with nothing to show for. Everything shown in the game's trailers was completely reused from the previous titles. The expectations were already low if you were following FM closely, and even then, the game managed to set a whole new low. It took 6 years and millions of dollars to develop after all, and it was released on an entirely new console generation, so you expect something to be better. At the very least, the more powerful hardware should be able to provide better visuals than a 10 year old game, right? Built from the ground up. The game's visuals was one of their main selling points, but in the end, even the already disappointing trailers turned out to be a lie, because the final game is a complete downgrade. But these graphic comparisons are highly overrated, so let's move on to the most important thing in any driving game, which is the driving. This is something that Forza has managed to consistently nail for non-wheel input devices, and now with new hardware, we were promised more physics improvements than the previous three FM titles combined. combined. And the final result? Yeah, people seem to like it. But I wasted too much time in Forza games to know that these devs are full of shit. The physics are better, but let's see what they did to achieve that. So basically, they copied the same physics from FM7, pasted it on FM, and just thrown the extra processing power of the new consoles at it. That's all they did. You could have always unlocked the frame rate on PC to achieve similar results. The only improvements in this game's physics come from the hardware, and not from the 6 years of its development. Oddly enough, they did improve their physics engine, but for some reason, didn't implement them in the new FM. These improvements can be seen in their other Forza title. Horizon and Motorsport share the same engine and constantly build upon each other. For some reason, however, none of the physics improvements in Horizon made it over to the new FM. Like the sim steering snapping bug that was fixed in Horizon 5 has now made a return in FM. They also made a more advanced braking model in Horizon 5, but it's only present on a few cars in FM. The suspension models are also outdated and some require extreme tuning to even become usable. Even the audio engine they brought from Horizon is poorly utilized, but how? They have the technology, they made the improvements, but decided not to use them. Why? Well this time, we might have an answer. One of the former employees at Turn Turn has recently opened up about the game's development. In short, Microsoft hires most of its employees for only 18 months at a time to avoid paying for employee benefits. This means that every one and a half year, people who have no experience with a project are now forced to complete it from halfway through. It only takes half a brain cell to realize that this model is a horrible idea for a game that not only is going to take 6 years to develop, but is supposed to receive consistent updates for an entire console generation. And I don't understand how people with crucial experience with the Forza Tech engine can be swapped out every 18 months, but a support employee handling in-game bans is required to keep working for years. Although, after the recent layoff, a lot of support tickets were left unanswered for weeks, so there's a high chance they finally got rid of them. Still, this doesn't excuse the people at the top who are full-time employees. Even they seem to have no idea as to how to improve the game. Let's take a look at the so-called power shifting exploit that Chris, the creative director at Turn 10, said was going to be fixed. But not only power shifting is still a thing, it is even stronger now. It was more of a bad game design than an exploit, but even when they attempted to improve something, they ended up making it worse. These are the type of people in charge of this game. And these were mostly related to the game's driving, which is supposed to be the best part of it. If you move on to other stuff, well, you've already heard how broken this game is, and for the things that do work, it's all brought over from FM7. Aside from a few quality of life and accessibility features, there's absolutely nothing new about FM. Some people say the online is good, but I fail to see how. All they did was add deadlines to each event with practice sessions before them, but it's not making any sense. With this model, you expect the game to take all the entries before the deadline, sort them into lobbies based on skill and safety rating, and then start the race from there, like Gran Turismo. But it doesn't work like that. 
When you select an event in FM, the game enters you into the matchmaking pool on the spot and throws you into a lobby as soon as possible. This means that the 30 minute entry window is completely useless, and so is your skill and safety rating. They're wasting your time because they try to copy a system without understanding how it works. Combine that with the lack of a ghosting system that they already have in Horizon, and you have highly unbalanced and chaotic lobbies, which is a big deal in a game that is supposed to be so heavily centered around competition. Fozo devs have always had the bullshit Horizon Casual Motorsport Serious attitude. They removed ranked from Horizon and told people to go play motorsport if they want competition. Well, this is the type of competition you're getting in FM, and there's no option for a more casual experience either. They completely scrapped drag and drifting despite literally advertising them in the trailers. They completely killed the casual side of FM, and as for competitive, the game simply doesn't work. Outdated netcode, infinite loadings, server crashes, game crashes, buggy replays, these game breaking problems are still in the game 6 months after its launch. Not even the sellout community leaders could handle it, and it shows in the player count. Even if they fix these problems, there are simply not enough players left for balanced lobbies or community events. The only thing saving it is Microsoft's game subscription service. By being on Game Pass, they managed to beat other FM titles at launch. But you know what else is on Game Pass? Forza Horizon 4 and 5. Casual or competitive, both offer a much better experience than FM, and all you're missing out on are a bunch of racetracks that you can find in a billion other racing games, like their main rival. And unlike the past, there isn't even a contest this time. As rushed as Horizon 5 was at launch, it still offered aspects that were direct improvements to its predecessor while still being on the same generation. In the case of FM, there's almost nothing. They could have re-released FM7 and it would have been a better experience. That's where they're recycling their content updates from anyways, and if this game wasn't hopeless enough already, it's going to get even worse. Not only FM is an unfinished mess, but they're making it worse on purpose. Upgrading cars for example was one of the biggest parts of Forza, but now, to put it simply, upgrades are locked behind hours of pointless grinding for each car. There's no way that a single sane person thought this was a good idea. No, not when you have a developer giving himself 800 levels on the early access launch. They went through with it regardless, and to calm the players down, released a blog post that is your typical corporate speak bullshit. They say they've gathered feedback and are exploring shit. <laughs> no, just no. You should be explaining how this idea got approved, tested, and made it through the final release. They then try to address a penalty system, but the bug fixing process they present makes no sense whatsoever, and as a result, the penalty system is even worse now. They are completely clueless about the game and are just spatting out random words to calm the players down. Well, the players aren't buying it, but others might. And this is something they really care about. They've been actively trying to make this game look much better than it actually is. And to some extent, it's working. The mainstream critics can be bought at, and as for the users, you don't need them. You have AI. Many of the positive reviews were proven to be bots. It's even more obvious when you read them. And as for negative reviews, they've been deleting them from the Microsoft Store. Fortunately, they can't do the same on other platforms, but how does Car XP come into play? Well, by forcing players to grind, you can increase their retention and playtime, and considering FM on Game Pass is not directly generating revenue, this would be a great way to make your game look more profitable and popular than it actually is. Now obviously, no one's gonna bother grinding this garbage, but there's no need to, cause the game can grind itself. All you have to do is enable auto drive and keep the game open. And this is intentional because Foza has always been quick on patching farming methods even in games they don't update anymore. This one however kept working update after update, but fortunately their plan failed. Why grind the same upgrades that you already have access to in other Foza games and all that for only one or two open class lobbies per week in a broken game? Nope! The Steam player numbers kept going to the ground and this decline is certainly steeper on Xbox due to Game Pass. Had it worked though, they would have likely introduced microtransactions for car XP, as this is something they've been experimenting with for cars in Horizon. But now, they're more likely to extract playtime from people testing car upgrades, so this whole system finally went away after 6 months. But if you can't milk the players, how are you going to make money while being so incompetent? Well it's simple, you milk other incompetent companies with car advertising. Now it is generally believed that game companies pay car manufacturers to license their cars, However, that's not always the case. Most information about car licensing in video games is confidential, but we know for example that Mercedes paid Nintendo to have their car in Mario Kart, and as for Forza, at one point they got paid by Hyundai to advertise the Veloster. 
Car companies are realizing that video games are a great way to bring attention to their brand and improve its prestige. Not only that, they get to advertise to millions of Zoomers from a young age, some of which will be successful in the future and become potential customers, and as a result, racing games are feeling more and more like a car advertisement. And this is most apparent in FM's main campaign. There's something missing here, something big. There's not a single race car in the entire campaign, in a game, with motorsport in the title. It's all road legal production cars, and the intro to these campaigns it's literally a generalized car advertisement. Either that or it's AI generated. But there's still something missing. Let me fix that. Modern high performance hatchbacks have evolved into. And this is not limited to FM. Horizon has been getting exceptionally close to Chinese car manufacturers, but no one outside of China would request these cars. Despite this, they dedicated an entire month to Chinese cars, and alongside them, there are Hyundai's once again. Make of that what you will. To add insult to the injury, FM is now a life service game. These games either improve over time or get completely abandoned. FM, however, is still getting updates while barely improving. The bug fixes are minimal and the new content is either paid or recycled from FM7. Even with good updates, this game is far from the same level as its competitor, so at this point, they should just abandon it and focus on the only title that is keeping the Forza name alive. They had no problem shutting down Forza Street after all, and FM is online only as well. Speaking of which, online only was the last thing that FM needed. The Forza online infrastructure was already aging and now they're throwing more load at it with no improvements. But why? Why increase server costs just to provide a worse experience? It makes sense for Ubisoft games as it makes them slightly harder to crack and protects the value of their microtransactions by preventing mods. But Forza? These people can hardly patch open source mods. Ill, you can play the game online on a pirated copy. Just what's the point? Microsoft pretends they care about game preservation, but now most of FM will be inaccessible once the servers inevitably shut down, or if you get banned. If you don't want games to become unplayable like this and own a copy of the crew, visit this website, you can make a change. Anyways, Forza has always been trigger happy with bans, even for simple things like ramming. They added a penalty system and safety rating to prevent that, but nothing in this game works, so Forza support was still banning people before they mysteriously disappeared. And when it came to anything else, they became completely useless, not even reading the tickets. Were these people not getting paid enough? Maybe. The social manager of Forza complained about its working hours on the official Forza Twitter. This company is a total mess. And it gets worse. It should be clear by now that bugs in FM are not a rarity. I once got a turn 10 badge alongside my name that went away after loading into the game. This badge is exclusive to developers. I posted it on Discord as a meme and moved on, but you know what happened next? I got a message from a turn 10 contact asking me how I got the bug. The game is filled with hundreds of game breaking bugs, that's fine, but they had to message me for having the icon of shame alongside my name. The people running this game care more about status than having a functioning game. And this is most apparent in PTG which I covered in a previous video. In short, they're an elitist group that have been around Forza since the beginning and are extremely close to turn 10. So much that some of them actually have this badge. They always get promoted on Forza's social, and every time they make a mistake, turn 10 is quick to bail them out without any repercussions. Thankfully, all they do is pat each other in the back in their own small circle because they don't provide anything useful to be noticed outside the Forza community. For example, one of their members was known to be a banger tuner, but when we actually tested his tunes, they were utter garbage. And despite this, Turn 10 uses this guy in multiple Forza videos teaching us how to tune. This whole game, the company behind it, and the people running it are rotten to the core. It's a complete dumpster fire with no hopes of getting any better. Not with these people currently in charge of it. And that was the main video, you can click off now. The rest is just your average video game drama. I start with exploring how I got banned. I'll let the main menu speak for itself. This is what you see when you get banned. Every option in the main menu except free play is grayed out. No campaign, cars, upgrading, tuning, painting or replays. They essentially revoked my access to a $100 game I paid for. And I know they have some excuse in their book of terms of service. I don't care. The button here clearly says buy. They basically stole my game just because someone in the dev team doesn't like me. And I can prove it. Let's also ignore the fact that in the past, I've said and done things that some people in the dev team and their beloved community leaders didn't like. 
I rarely even played the game past its initial month of release, so how comes I suddenly get banned two months after it? The ban reason says unallowed modding, and let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's say I did use unallowed mods. Why is this a permanent ban? This is my first strike in FM. At the same time, there was a ban away for people who used a public modding tool in FH and FM. But even those who had previous ban strikes only got 5 days in this specific ban wave, which confirms that my ban was indeed manual. You could say it's because I have so many other bans, but bans don't transfer over different FOSA games. It's a policy they have to probably sell more games. And even if it applies here, why wait 3 months? It sounds like they wanted to make me look bad by blending my ban in a ban wave, but failed horribly at it. But could there be another explanation? Well, the FOSA competitive community thinks so, because they tried to frame me for a time I set in a tournament qualifier. But that's not even it, because my time was still up there several days after my ban. The devs probably didn't even know about it, and they don't care about multiplayer cheaters in their game. If they did, they would have removed half the times here. But there was one blade and cheater at the top of the leaderboard, at the very least you'd think they would ban him. Well, they didn't. They merely removed his time. The guy came back and set a faster cheater time. They literally put the least amount of effort possible when it comes to actual cheaters. But the funnier thing is how the competitive community proved my time was illegitimate. Let's see how the leader of one of the most competitive FM clubs caught me. Zero chance that's legit. He's definitely at it again. I'm going to watch the replay. You haven't even watched the replay. Definitely cheating. Now let's see his unbiased response after watching it. I want to focus on this part. You can tell the guys around him are riding on the edge of traction while he's just cruising at 90%. And there's so many things wrong with this. As I've said before, replay files are not accurate. It's literally impossible for them to be due to how compressed the file size is. The replay file mostly stores basic position and input data, and even that's not accurate. If you decide to watch the telemetry in a replay file, the game simply makes shit up based on an already inaccurate data. An experienced leader of a competitive club should already know that, and actually, he does. Someone in my comments pointed out how his teammates had suspicious traction data, and he was quick to defend his teammate and say that replay telemetry is not reliable? So this guy defends his teammate using a known fact, but suddenly lies about the same fact to accuse me. <laughs> Another person I want to touch upon is the world record holder for this qualifier. He's known to be the best FM player in the world at the moment, and he also easily throws accusations on other people. Let's see his reasoning. He has never been to a LAN. So according to this guy, not appearing in a LAN tournament would already make you suspicious. He himself has appeared in the quarter million dollar FOSA RC, which already had a low skill ceiling due to its invite only nature. His performance there wasn't bad, but also nothing to write home about. He was about average in a field that wasn't exactly the best of the best, but now, suddenly, he's the best player in the world! Only a few players come within a tenth of his time, and the recent FM tournament was open to everyone, so it's very suspicious for the top times to be more than a tenth away from each other. I made a video showcasing how easy it is to cheat in racing games and get away with it, and I think some of these guys took notes. And this is a money tournament. Logitech and McLaren were dumb enough to host a 100k event in a game that doesn't even have a spectator mode with a buggy replay system and no form of cheat detection. I also find it funny that this guy says I made my cheating video for money, when he himself has made thousands of dollars from Forza tournaments, including this one. I retired from the tournament in that video so as not to win any money, and the video itself ended up making just under $300, which is far from the thousands I could be earning if I simply used the knowledge I researched for that video to cheat in money tournaments. He's also, of course, using the same replay excuse and mentioning his teammates being sketchy. What does his teammates have to do with any of this? But the reality is, respect and reputation goes a long way in competitive communities. If you've been around for long enough, people rarely give a second thought and take what you say for pretty much granted and are also easy to forgive your mistakes. Another guy, for example, got caught faking his lap times a few years ago. And guess what? He's now an admin in the same community and even got featured in official FOSA videos to teach us how to go fast. This is the same as that PTG guy teaching us how to tune. These people at the top of the FOSA community are frauds and not even knowledgeable. Another guy, for example, who is also a member of one of the biggest racing organizations, points out how suspicious it is for me to get 74% breaking on every corner with no mistakes. These so-called pro players are supposed to be the best in the game, but now I can prove that they don't even know how to break in a straight line. For context, FM's breaking without ABS is stupidly simple. 
If your input is below 75%, you brake normally and your car decelerates based on how hard you press it. If you go above 75%, however, your wheels lock up, which isn't good. So the trick to braking in a straight line is to get as close to 75% without going over it. Now a few cars in FM have different brake physics, but otherwise there is no reason to press brakes over 75%. With this simple knowledge, you would expect the best players to limit their braking to 75 as well, but for some reason, most of them don't. And you can't even use a third party program excuse because this is a feature on Microsoft's own Elite One controller. You can literally become both faster and more consistent if you simply limit your input and take advantage of this terrible game design. So why are the best players in this game not doing this? Do they really not know about this simple fact in the game they're supposed to be the best at? Or are they trying to not get perfect braking on purpose? Cause even if you have subtle grip hacks, your braking distance will be noticeably shorter with perfect braking, which is easily detectable even with basic telemetry. Is this why the best FM player in the world brakes faster than everyone else while having less input? I don't know, maybe he just has a better PC. Either way, I'll show you a tip on the screen. But let's assume these guys are legit. Either they're not as good as they claim, or are lying about known facts to make me look bad. I don't claim to be an expert in Forza games, but I sure as hell know a lot more about it than these people do. I wasted too much time testing different stuff in this game, all while the competitive community still can't figure out a basic replay file. But good players can easily spot cheats from an inaccurate replay file. Well, no. In my previous video, I showcased 4 laps with accurate replays and log files and asked people to find a one cheat at a time. To my surprise, most of these pro players were completely absent. It's almost as if they don't care. And the few that did guess got it wrong. Overall, only 30% of all guesses were correct, which isn't much considering a random guess would have had a 25% chance of being right. I only found two reasonable explanations from the people who guessed correctly, and they both used a full telemetry log. So these pro players are full of shit. Or did they really miss such a controversial video? Either way, I give up. You win turn 10. My channel was built from the ground up with foes of videos, but now I'm done. If you release a new game, I'll pirate it, play it for 20 hours, and move on. You guys and your communities can keep patting each other in the back, and this time without me to call your bullshit. It's simply both easier and pays a lot more to be a generic yes man creator. And that's it, you can find link to sources in the description, but not everything can be archived and their authors can easily pull a PTG. And I want to leave Foza almost completely behind, so I'll only respond to comments up until 2 weeks after this video goes live. I will also be unleashing the majority of my Foza videos from this channel in the coming weeks.